There's some really common problems people make in dog training, and I'm going to break those into three categories. The first one is going to be that te people teach their dog to sit and stay, then they walk away from their dog and they call their dog to a come, or they even just release their dog. The problem with that is that the dog starts to form a habit that when you're away from them, whether it's a second, 10 seconds, or three minutes, you're gonna eventually call the dog to you. So the dog preemptively will get out of his sit and get out of his stay and will come to you. When the dog makes that mistake, it's your fault, not the dog's fault. That's critical to understand. We don't wanna make that with the mistake with our dogs, so we wanna teach them to stay and then clearly release them away. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example with Goofy, the wrong way to do it first, and you'll start to see a little pattern of mistakes with him. So if I say, Goofy, sit, and I go away from him, and I say, yes, good boy, he comes to me, right? That's normal. I'm releasing him. Some pet dog trainers make a critical mistake with the dog where they'll say here, they'll say, Goofy, sit, and the dog will sit, and they'll walk over here, and they'll say, Goofy, come and Goofy comes. He's now formed a habit that when I walk away from him, he's waiting for me to give the secondary command. In other words, this one command isn't enough for him. He's trying to form a behavior or form a pattern in his mind that he's going to go to the next behavior and he's going to preemptively be a really good dog and be really obedient to you and do the next behavior even before you ask for it, even though you don't really want it. And I've seen this over and over with a lot of pet dogs. They always break their stay. Now, when you're doing a dog that's going to be doing competitive obedience or protection sports or anything like that, or even your own house dog, you want to form a clear picture with the dog. That means if I say to the dog, Goofy, sit, and I walk away, I want to be able to stay here, talk to you. I want to be able to walk away from the dog, walk up to the dog, and do anything here with the dog, and he never thinks he's going to get out of that sit. No matter what happens, he is sitting because I asked him to sit. And there's never, ever, ever any sec secondary obedience. So here we're gonna do it again. So sit, I walk away, and he's gonna learn he stays there. When I tell my dog to sit, I should be able to, under any distraction, Goofy sit, I should be able to distract him. And he's not gonna go for that distraction because he knows that that's a sit. I take the distraction back. I left him on a sit. When I go to release the dog, this is the critical difference between good training and improper training, is when I go back to him, I'm gonna say, Goofy, yes. I touch him, I do a tactile release, then I give him a treat. So he knows he must wait for a tactile release. Any kind of a static obedience I'm gonna do with the dog, such as a sit or a down, is gonna have an implied stay. So any static exercise I teach him or an immobile exercise I teach him to, to down, to sit, to stand or whatever it is, that means he needs to hold that obedience until he hears the next thing. If I'm away from him, I'm not going to recall him to me. I'm going to do all my recalls in prey mode. I'm going talk, to talk about that in another video. But here, he has to understand if I say, Goofy, sit, and I walk away, his job is to stay there until I call him. If I tell him to stay there, Goofy, sit, and I drop a bunch of treats in front of me, it should mean nothing to him because he's not going to come to me. He's going to stay right where he is. I've got a trail of treats coming to me. If I start to go back to him, he still knows his job is to stay there. I will give him a tactile release. I will touch him. Yes, that's his release word. That's when he gets released. If you go through this clearly with your dog, your dog will never make the mistake of leaving. And I'm gonna give you a great example of why this is so critical. This is imperative because if I tell my dog, sit over here, and I cross the street over here to do something else, and there's cars coming, and he's been recalled off of that sit time after time after time, his natural habit is to cross that street, get hit by a car, and come to you. He must, must, must understand that if I say sit, this sit means stay. You can say stay if you want to, it doesn't matter. But here, sit means sit. I go away from him, and no matter what, here, nope, I put him back. Sit. Good. 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 Good sit. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to reward him. Good sit. Sit. 
I'm going to go away from him again. And I'm going to try to distract him a little bit now as he gets more advanced that he should see that nothing I'm doing here is going to mean come. I come back and say, oh, that's a good boy. I do intermittent praising and intermittent rewards with a little bit of affection. Good boy. Stay. And I can walk away or sit. Whatever your command is. Commands are completely irrelevant, the words. So until finally I go up to him and I say, Goofy, good boy. Yes. And that's where he's going to get his reward. And that's part one of the three biggest mistakes people make in dog training.